In this video, you'll learn six strategies for settlers of Catan. I only select the strategies that have high win rates against all levels of competition, even in tournaments. So let's get started. And we're gonna start things off with strategy number one, full Orvi cheap. One of the most interesting setups is the full Orvi cheap strategy. This strategy only starts on ore, wheat and sheep hexes and is able to improve settlements into cities very efficiently. The strength of full Orvi cheap is its ability to buy a lot of development cards which make them often take the largest army. Their 10 point plan typically looks like this. Three cities, largest army and two victory points from the development card pile. But full Orvi cheap players also have some major challenges to overcome. Building roads and settlements both take wood and brick, but they don't produce any and doing a 4 for 1 trade with the bank is really expensive. Therefore, they either need to be really good traders or have some luck with drawing a year of plenty of road building or a monopoly from the development card deck. Now let's take a look at my favorite strategy. Strategy number two is the road builder. This strategy is totally different from the full Orvi cheap setup as it places on a ton of wood and brick hexes in order to get easy expansion spots for settlements and to take the longest road later in the game. The setup typically wins every road race it's in, which is a big advantage in Settlers of Catan. The biggest challenge for the road builder is building cities, because it typically doesn't produce either ore or wheat, or sometimes it doesn't produce either with its initial settlements. Possible solutions are to trade for these resources, or to build on strong third settlement spots that produce the missing ore or wheat. Of these six strategies, this is the most advanced to play, and I can't fully explain all the details that go into it in this short amount of time. That's why I'm made a special video on my Patreon page dedicated to the road builder strategy. But for now, let's move on to strategy number three. The strategy most beginners try to play is the five resource setup. This strategy is very beginner friendly because you have to trade less in order to build your expansion spots and improve your settlements into cities. A major downside of this strategy is the way it does a little bit of everything. Players who play with this setup often fall short in taking either the largest army and the longest road, because other players truly focus on just one of them, which makes the five resource setup a little worse against strong opponents. The upside of this strategy is the same as the downside because it does a little bit of everything. The setup doesn't have to rely on trades with the bank or with your opponents to get things done. The best way to get to 10 points with this setup is by increasing your production by building cities and settlements and then to look at what is possible. Sometimes one of the players that focuses on either the army or the road struggles which gives the 5 resource player the opportunity to take one of them or even both. Now it's time to look at the next one. The city plus road setup does exactly what it says it does. You build a ton of cities and you take the longest road. To get cities you need ore and wheat as well as wood and brick to build roads. It's key to not build on sheep, which is fine because sheep is usually the least used resource in the game. Cities are worth 2 points each and you can build a maximum of 4 cities in the game. So 8 points plus the 2 points from the longest road makes 10. This strategy is quite easy to play when the circumstances are ideal. They are ideal when there is no road builder player in the game. Because when there is a road builder it's nearly impossible to take the longest road as the city plus road player. The best board to play the city plus road setup on is a high sheep board. Because on those boards it's a lot easier to trade for sheep with your opponents. Here's another fun strategy. The port strategy usually has a ton of the same resource and the possibility to build on a 2 for 1 port that matches the resource you produce a lot of. The example on this board highlights a wood port strategy, which is one of the strongest port strategies in Catan. The biggest strength of the port strategy is its flexibility, because it can 2 for 1 the main resource into the resource they need, though they don't often have turns where they can't do anything at all. The biggest downside of port strategies is that you don't know whether or not you can go for longest road or longest largest army early in the game. Your opponents will also not be very happy to help you build on the port, which makes your start often quite slow. Surprisingly, it's a strategy that works better against top tier players than against average players. Because average players overvalue the strength of 2 for 1 ports and block the matching resource way too often. I saved the best strategy for last, because strategy number 6 is hybrid or we cheap. Viewers familiar with my channel know that I believe that hybrid or we cheap is the best strategy in Catan. It's similar to full or we cheap because it places on strong ore, wheat and sheep hexes in order to build cities and buy development cards. The difference is that hybrid or we cheap also has a little bit of wood or brick to make building a road and a settlement a little easier. This strategy works on every single board as long as there is enough ore and wheat to support it for you to pick. My rule of thumb is at least 4 pips of ore 
4 pips of wheat and 2 pips of sheep production and more is always welcome. If you want to learn more about hybrid orbit sheep, I recommend watching this video next, because in this video I give tips and tricks on how to play hybrid orbit sheep and full orbit sheep effectively.